On the 12th of April 1963, Pan Am Flight 6969 landed at Pyongyang International Airport. It doesn't matter if you're On board were four musicians from England, and they had been invited to visit by North Korea's supreme leader, Kim Il-sung. At the time, Kim was locked in a battle with bean farmers over a recent land reform. In speeches, he railed against those farmers who preferred to dump and destroy their beans rather than hand them over to the state for redistribution. Kim coined a phrase that was to be repeated across state media. He vowed that the Communist Party of Korea would work tirelessly to smash the dumpers. But it wasn't just poorly translated lyrics which had caught the North Koreans' attention. They had heard a sensational story about these four elegant men, together better known as the Queefels, burning a large sum of money on an island off the coast of Wales. A stunt that scandalized the British press, but charmed the anti-capitalist Kim Il-sung. Quifophilia had arrived in North Korea, yes, and it would soon take over the world. This is the earliest recording of the Queefels. Tommy, Ricky, Patty and Coco, then known as That Queefel Sound, rehearsing in Patty's family's primitive adobe hut in 1956. They are singing about tits. Got a lovely pair of boobies. Oh, you've got a lovely pair of boobies. Got a lovely pair of boobies. Now, I, I don't think it's any exaggeration on my part when I say that the Queefels invented music in 1956. Uh, before that, there was nothing. And in a funny sort of way, after them, there will be nothing again. Professor Anthony Gaggett-Haggett has studied Queefophilia at Cambridge University for the past 50 years. 
Yes, well, in 1963, Kim Il-sung invites the Kweefels uh, to visit North Korea. I'm sorry to stop you, Professor, but 1963 was a very long time ago. In fact, Kim Il-sung died in 1994, so why are you using the present tense? Oh, I just thought it lent a sense of immediacy to my narrative. Yeah, well, it doesn't, so stop it. Uh, okay. Well, in 1963, Kim Il-sung invited the Kweefels to visit North Korea, uh, but he is now dead. Thank you, Professor. Now, regrettably, you can't tell the story of the Queefels without mentioning Dennis Havisham. Uh, Dennis was a pederast, as so many of us are, but I think he took it a little too far, and his influence disturbed the boys, and ultimately led to their hypersexualized lyrics in later life. Oh, Mr. Havisham, don't sell me rusty trombone. Don't sell me rusty trombone. I'll get by. You know, all of their songs about rubbing feces on one another, giving each other rusty trombones, eating soggy biscuits, all of that can be traced back to Dennis Havisham. But the music was great. And play rusty trombones on our own. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Rusty Uh, what you have to remember is that uh, 50 pounds in those days is, is worth perhaps 50 million pounds a day, you see. Um, but, of course, they cost Dennis Havisham his life. Oh well, Britain was different then. Mr. Havisham's rusty trombone. Yum, 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 yum. Mr. Havisham's rusty trombone.